Okay, you guys just saw the big shrive. He had a nice drift going down there. He's fishing the nymphs. I'm going to be fishing a little caddis. Actually, it's tan with a little bit of olive on it. Fish have been hitting the caddis right here. Earlier today, I was really slamming them. Another one just took it there. We're going to see if we can get some dry fly action on video as well. Where I'm going to cast on my first cast, I'm going to try to hit a spot right over by that green bank. Seems like they're dropping off this tree here, dropping down in, and the fish are taking it. Dropped it in the hot spot. There's, oh, we missed that one. Try to fly off a little bit. One of the tricks I'm going to show you when I'm drying my fly, a lot of the times I'll bring it in, especially right after I catch a fish or miss a fish, it'll have that slime on it. And I take my fly, I tuck it into my shirt right here. This has CDC and deer hair. Dry it off, you can see how wet it is. Then I blow on it three or four good times, get it dry, try to keep it off the water, and I continue to cast it out. Not my best cast. Get a little wiggle. Oh, missed another. That little wiggle sometimes add li it'll add life like a caddis has when it's skipping across the top before it takes off, and that attracts a strike, and that's what I just did. Perfect cast. There's the fish. And if you look, there's not a ton of fish taking them. It's just I knew I know what they're taking from earlier. Fish are still on to it. The caddis aren't coming out of the trees. And we got a rainbow. I put, if you notice, I stripped my line in, and the reason is I have my cast perfect right now where I need it to be. So I didn't want to reel that fish in at all. Stripped it in, I'll be able to get my cast exactly where I want it in that same soft spot out there over by the grass. A little bit of difficulty casting this. This is actually a 10 foot 6 nymph rod, but I didn't want to change anything up. Didn't want to bring down a rod that's better suited for uh, casting dries. I saw this coming off. I figured I'd just work it, and I actually got used to casting this rod pretty well. Good call on the surface. Did you see it? There it is. Saw that baby surface. Not saying it's the same fish, but most likely was. Got my fly probably a foot in front of him, and as soon as it came past him, he took it. Another decent rainbow. We'll go ahead and we'll try to get one over by that grass. There seems to be a couple more surface in there. Once again, I'm gonna tuck this CDC de deer hair caddis, dry it off good, get some of that fish slime off it. Dry it off good like that. I'll take a couple good back casts as well. There's a good cast. Got him. Did you see him come out? <laughs> that actually came the whole way out of the water and took that one. Let's get another rainbow. I missed him. Did you see him? 
We know where he's at. We'll get him this time. Trying to fly off a little bit. There he is. And I don't think that's the same fish. Little dinky, another rainbow. I'm gonna show you guys. This is why I have two of those Chattises in my hat right now. Look at that hook. Looks like another one's gonna to go to the graveyard. I'm gonna to try to bend it back a little bit. We'll see if it still works. These are thin hooks. Temco dry fly hooks, they work great, but you only get so many fish out of them. That one looks pretty good. You don't wanna bend them back too many times. Just like if you take a, a coat hanger and you just keep bending in a metal coat hanger, you know how it breaks. You're gonna have the same effect with this. I usually give them one good bend back Pray that's not when the big one hits. Dry it off real good, get that CDC good and dry. Make sure I get a good float. Still stripping them in. Dry, at least a little bit of lining time. Get back into the kill zone, there it is. Bottom. About as simple as it gets as far as dry fly fishing right there you see the fish surfacing you know where they're holding they're holding below a tree where the caddis are coming off of coming into the water you just take your time lay a cast out there and uh with the caddis especially a little brook trout with the caddis especially you give it that little bit of a wiggle not enough to take your uh, your dry fly under but to make it look like it's getting ready to skip and take off and that Definitely excites the fish sometimes and makes them strike. Get back on him. He rejected it. He'll be back. Oh, there's one out there. A couple. There we go. Holy crap, he jumped straight towards me. Oh. A quick release once again. You get the fly good and dry. And that wasn't even where I was casting. That's the best part. Here's a little further down. Here one just rose. We're sitting on a little bit past lunchtime and midday risers all over the place here in northern Pennsylvania. Oh boy, look at that, right off the grass bank. Skipping the caddis. This is a little heavier of a fish. Oh yeah, it's a nice looking brook. Take a look at this one. Beautiful looking fish. Beautiful looking. That, that'll be one end one there. You can get this. That's a beautiful Pennsylvania brook trout right there. And that's the perfect one to end on.